and welcome back. This is your man, Warrior, and this is going to be a, an amazing video. You're going to want to share this with everybody, and you may even want to take some notes. This is on par with my mod video, which uh, is arguably one of the most educating videos in the game and most impactful videos in the game for a wide swath of individuals. You will want to share this with absolutely everyone. We are gonna be going over potency versus tenacity, how it works, the misconceptions, and why everybody really truly doesn't understand potency and tenacity the way that they should. And when you look at their modding, it'll become apparently clear once you understand it. Now, I've been back to the developers a couple of times. I think I've had three trips there and I've had a number of talks about potency and tenacity and how it works. And I'm going to try to simplify it in its easiest way possible. But when you take a very convoluted context and simplify, sometimes you're not taking into account every little nuance. That if you understand this in a really good way, that my oversimplification is for the mass audience. It's for everybody who doesn't understand potency and tenacity. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is there's basically three doorways that you have to get through for a debuff to occur on another character. And we're going to explain each of those three doorways. But the first thing I want to go over is the misconception of potency and tenacity. What a lot of people believe is that a debuff starts at 0% potency and that they must apply potency to their character for that ability to occur. That is actually incorrect. Let's now go into what these three doorways are and how you get through these three doorways. So door number one is the ability to apply the debuff. This is before any potency and tenacity check is applied. It's completely dependent on the ability. One of the first characters I'm going to give you an example of is R2-D2 and his Electroshock Prod. And in door number one, you have to have the ability to apply the debuff past this door check. And if you look, his only passes door number one 80 percent of the time this is not a guarantee even if you were to pass every other door you got to get through door number one and the ability states 80 percent of the time so with door number one it is going to stop this ability 20 percent of the time and 80 percent of the time let it through door number one another example is emperor palpatine this again says deal special damage to all enemies with a 70 percent chance to stun them for one turn now, each character you're targeting will have its own separate doors that it will have to go through. Three separate doors it will have to go through for each of those characters. But the first door will only get past 70% of the time. Now, not all characters get stopped potentially in door number one. Some have abilities such as intimidation tactics, which pass 100% of the time that first door which, for example, is Intimidation Tactics. If you notice, it will inflict critical chance down and offense down for three turns. What's really cool is it does not give a percentage. What that means is this happens 100% of the time as far as going through door number one. We're going to come back to this, but you'll also notice it says Rebel Enemies can't resist these debuffs. That is going to play into door number three, which we will get to in a minute, but keep this on the back burner in your mind because that is important to understand which characters have resisting and evading capable abilities that can overcome that. So, but this ability, Intimidation Tactics, has a 100% chance of getting through door number one on applying critical chance down and offense down for three turns. Again, another really good ability is Captain Han Solo's basic disabling shot, which deals physical damage and inflicts days for two turns. This does not say it inflicts days for 70% of the time or 80% of the time. It just inflicts days. So this has a 100% chance of getting through door number one. Also, this is another good example about door number three, which we will get to in a minute, where it says empire targets can't resist or evade 
and they take double damage. That is going to be uh, applicable in the third round. So we're going to talk about that again, put this on the back burner. Right now, we're only talking about the door number one. So now you should understand that every ability is not created equal, that some abilities only happen a percentage of the time and some abilities can happen 100% of the time. If it does not stipulate what percentage it does, then it is 100% of the time. Now, that is to get through door number one. Now let's move to door number two. Door number two is what we would call the potency tenacity check. This is the most misunderstood portion of the mathematical equation, and it is also the portion that people often get wrong because they misunderstand this particular phase. It is also the only doorway that you have any control over. Door, door number one is ability driven. Door number three is ability and or RNG driven but door number two is solely at the discretion of the individual and how you mod your character. This is where your control comes into play. What little bit of control you do have. The first thing we need to understand is that every debuff, such as inflicting days for two turns, has a 100% potency, not 0% potency to start. This is the largest misconception and the reason why people do not understand potency and tenacity. This ability naturally has 100% potency. It will happen. Now, there are extenuating circumstances that will resist or prevent or cause it to fail. We'll go into those. But for now, know that the abilities, the debuffs, start at 100%, not at 0%. Next, people are going to mod with potency and they're going to add additional potency to the ability. In addition, a character has a natural tenacity or potency about them. If we look at Captain Han Solo, he naturally had 40% potency to start. So he has 140% natural potency for his abilities. Now you're probably thinking, wow, warrior is off his rocker. This can't be true. I have spoken with multiple developers who have told me this is in fact reality. So you're probably asking yourself, well, what difference would it make then for tenacity? If they have a 140% potency base, I can't even get to 140% potency. And that is exactly right. But we have to take a step back and understand what potency and tenacity and the mods are for and do. First, there are two parts of the game. There is PVE, player versus environment, and PVP, player versus player. When you're going against PVE, all of the characters and tanks and everything you're going against, the Rancor, have a naturally low potency and high tenacity. That is how they are built in the game. So for your characters going against PVE, you can use tenacity more effectively and your potency effectively as well, but it is less necessary than going against PVP. For PVP, specifically against characters to characters in arena, it is much more difficult to overcome the potency of an ability than it is in PVE. So with that said, you need to understand that this ability naturally has 100% potency. He brings in 40% additional and I have added 37% more, which means that this ability has 177% potency. There is no character in the game that can get to 177% tenacity except for two. That would be Thrawn and CLS. Both of them have a Zeta and both of their Zetas give them 100% tenacity. And that additional tenacity, if they were modded with tenacity, would be able to stop me at door number two from applying this. With the exception that Thrawn is Empire and Captain Han Solo's Days has a free pass 
through not only door number two, but door number three, which is that this ability cannot be resisted or evaded. So a lot of people, again, are going to say, well, this is silly. That means they've built tenacity for PVP as basically worthless. Well, let's talk about that. First, when you're early in the game, many characters do not have a naturally high potency. In fact, many people cannot access potency mods early on and or you're fighting in PVE. With either PVE or early PVP, you're going to face a lot of characters and teams that have low natural potency. If you're able, which tenacity is one of the easiest mod sets to get, to apply a lot of tenacity on your character, get it up to 60 or 70, and let's say their character had 100% potency plus the 10% that it had base, that ability would have 110% chance of applying your 40% tenacity would drop it down from the 110 down to 70. That would mean that you're re denying that ability 30% of the time of getting through door number two. So that is where tenacity can play a role, both in PVE and early arena. Now, the problem is the higher you get in arena and the more veteran status you become, the more maxed out every character becomes. Once a character is maxed, especially at gear level 12, they normally have very high natural potency and tenacity, and it's very easy to mod them with potency to pretty much all but assure you getting through door number two. So with this debuff, door number two, you can overcome the opponents, and you get through door number two and you go to door number three. So with door number three, once an ability passes door number one and door number two, it goes to door number three. And in door number three, even if it passes door number one and door number two, door number three can say 15% of the time, I'm not going to let you pass. It is just a natural hardwired built-in RNG that says, even if the ability has 100% capability, and even if you pass potency and tenacity and overcome the tenacity of the character, I'm still gonna say no 15% of the time. So you're at best going to have a debuff apply 85% of the time. Now there are on door number three, extenuating circumstances with certain characters, such as this disabling shot that you're looking at, that say things like empire targets or rebel targets or somebody can't resist or evade an attack or can't or resist evade this ability. What that says is when it goes through door number one and passes and goes to door number two, let's pretend door number two says the character is Thrawn and he has enough tenacity to stop it and normally it wouldn't pass door number two. The rejection from door number two is passed to door number three and door number three says, wait, even though potency and tenacity, tenacity is one, we are going to allow it to occur because it's hardwired at door number three to say pass go, always pass go on this particular ability. So remember that, that you have this certain abilities. Again, not all abilities are created equal. Some abilities have the ability to make sure that they always apply at door number three because they have this specific worded verbiage written in and this verbiage or whatever uh, that's written in like can't be resisted or evaded will overcome even the 15% RNG that is hardware programmed into the game because even if their tenacity wins out and the game says, well, 15% of the time we're going to let it pass anyway, it can say, nope, we're going to make sure this ability does go through 100% of the time. So when you're reading your abilities, you want to make sure that the better the character is, first door, you want the ability to be 100%. You don't want it to have a percentage chance. Percentage chance abilities already limit how often it's going to apply. Number two, you want to have more potency on your character than tenacity, but there are a few characters which you can apply tenacity on and successfully pa defeat potency. Those couple of characters that can successfully defeat potency would be the Wampa, Commander Luke Skywalker, Thrawn, and that is why the team has started to build more characters with this higher tenacity because they realize that everybody's going all in on potency, really making it nearly impossible for people to use tenacity in an effective manner. So they're starting to put natural tenacity into these characters at a much higher rate. 
and then three, remember that even if it passes your first door and second door that goes to the third door, it still could be denied 15% of the time, or it could be overridden by an ability that says this cannot be resisted or evaded. That is one of the best adds to a ability because it allows you to overcome the 15% RNG hardwired. And then remember that not all characters are created equal. Some have a natural higher tenacity. If you're new to the game and you're playing this and you are wondering, should I put tenacity on? The only reason why you would put tenacity on is if you can overcome a ridiculous amount of potency. And even then you would only reduce a percentage of the chance of that ability occurring. And at the end game, tenacity is virtually worthless unless you're going into player versus environment this hopefully answers your question to potency and tenacity and how it works this is one of the most complex topics and extremely difficult to explain so i hope that i did a good job of explaining the three doors and how to get through the three doors and how they work and if you have any questions about potency or tenacity make sure to leave them in the comments down below as always keep your gaming on warrior out.